Uh, turn to Mr. Moskowitz, who will be recognized for five minutes of questioning. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, so, Mr. Gold, you gave a whole diatribe for a couple of minutes <clears throat> about UAPs, science, data collection, stigma. A lot of non-believers in all of this would just ask a very simple question. Why? Why is it so hard? Right? Like, why are people, anytime they ask, why are they always thwarted? Why are they always judged? Why is they always have misinformation spread? Why is there always retribution? Why is it always met with an ear? What's the why? If it doesn't exist, why is, there, why is it such a problem? I think if you go through the history of science, uh, Representative, it is always difficult for breakthroughs and new information, regardless of whether it's UAP or any other kind of discovery. And in science, we're supposed to be open, but when you break with the orthodoxy of what's believed, whether it's Galileo saying that uh, the Earth doesn't rotate or the Earth rotates around the sun or the sun doesn't rotate around the Earth, it's always challenging for new beliefs. And the more extraordinary those discoveries, the more extraordinary those new beliefs, it's very difficult. So I think this is natural. There's natural conservatism that when it comes to science, but this issue in particular has been very difficult where, again, even to attempt to study it becomes problematic. But every hearing like this, every news report, uh, every video, documentaries, I was uh, privileged to be part of something Dan Fair is putting together, I think many of us have interviewed for it, documentary over 30 uh, different government officials, every brick in the wall will help get us closer to getting to the truth. I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Elizondo, did I have that correct? Sir. I'm gonna put my, I'm a recovering lawyer, so I'm gonna put my hat on for a second. You said you signed a document, love that. Who gave that to you? The U.S. government, sir. Okay, you have a copy of it? Um, it is stored in a skiff right now. Uh, I do not have possession of it, the U.S. government does. What department of the U.S. government gave you this document? I will say the Department of Defense. Unfortunately, I can't say in this forum much more than that. You specifically said the document said you can't talk about crash retrieval. <clears throat> well, you know, you can't talk about Fight Club if there's no Fight Club. <laughs> Correct. Okay, I'm just making an observation. Yes, sir. So, that document that you signed, that you said exists, specifically said you can't talk about crash retrieval. Correct, sir. It was a limitation on what I, because already I'd been speaking publicly about the topic, and so the document said you can continue saying X, Y, Z, but you cannot discuss the topic when you, of crash give retrieval. Me, give me the atmosphere of signing this document. You're in a room by yourself? I'm in a skiff with a security officer, sir. Just one-on-one, -on -one, anybody else? Uh, there may have been an assistant as well. Um, it was in a skiff uh, within a... Department of Defense facility. Give me your background real quick. Uh, my background is um, I went to school to study uh, microbiology and immunology, uh, entered into the U.S. Army, and after a very short stint in military intelligence, um, I became a counterintelligence special agent as a civilian. Later on, I became a special agent in charge, uh, running investigations in counterterrorism and counterespionage primarily, uh, with some experience in counterinsurgency and counter-narcotics. And then in uh, 2009 time frame, when I came back to the Pentagon after a tour with the Director of National Intelligence, um, I quickly became part of a program that was originally called OSAP that evolved into the program now called ATIP, which is where those videos that we now see, the Go Fast, the Gimbal, the FLIR, um, that was part of our effort, sir. Right, so you don't, you're not some conspiracy theorist. You actually have a legitimate background. Well, sir, I'm certainly not a conspiracy theorist. Uh, I'm, I'm fact-based, just a fact. <clears throat> so when you're in this room, I want to paint the picture for everybody. You're in this room, you're by yourself, you're in a skiff, you're handed a document. How long is the document? Uh, it's about a page front and back. So basically you have some things they call trigraphs, which I cannot, again, uh, talk to. How long were you given to sign the document? As long as I needed, sir. And I, I, what if you didn't sign it? Well, the, I suspect there'd be repercussions. I wouldn't have access to certain information. Was a law, were you allowed to conduct, uh, ask a lawyer, or weren't allowed to talk, weren't allowed to ask for a lawyer to review the document? It, it wasn't an option, but they may, probably wouldn't have, have allowed me to because the document itself is pretty explicit about, you have to be, wait, putting me in an interest, let me try to thread a needle here. Um, there are certain documents that we have in the US government that allow people to have access to certain programs whether it's a special, and I'm gonna be very generic here, whether it's a special access program or a controlled access program, SAP, CAP, whatnot. How many people have to sign that document? It depends how many people are gonna get access to the information, sir. Okay, <clears throat> last question. Uh, doctor, real quick, can you uh, tell us about the Omaha incident? 
in, in greater detail. I've read your background, right? Some people would label you as a member of the deep state uh, with, since you worked in government for a long period of time. But can you tell us more about that incident? You've written a lot about that. I wrote a lot about incidents like it, Congressman, but that specific incident was involved the USS Omaha, the tour, the tour combat ship uh, of the U.S. Navy operating off Southern California. Uh, I don't remember the exact date. It was within the last decade. And what the watchstanders on the bridge observed was a, a UAP, again, something that was uh, aloft but had no observable exhaust or control surfaces. So it, it was something that couldn't be explained. And then they saw it enter the water uh, from the atmosphere and going through the air-sea interface, and so thus exhibiting transmedium travel. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you.